Division 7. You all still have to rest the box. We're going to go second along. We have fire in the cockpit. Four. Bronx announced the second alarm is the transmitter for box 4794 to the address 2096 Grand Concourse. That's between East 180 Street and East 181 Street. Buying a one story taxpayer. Alright, guys, we are 1084 at the second alarm in the Bronx. Fire in a supermarket. Um, Early on, they had uh, ion batteries involved in the fire. Hazmat. All right, we're going with third alarm. We have a double roof in the cockpit. Um, so they went with a second alarm. They found fire in between space between the ceiling and the roof. Um, we got about three lines stretched right now. I think they're stretching a fourth line right here, 46 engine. Command engine four eight. You got a towel out of back there. Correct. Fifty one back there. Fire the cockroach with a one hundred one by seven five six five. Squad captain. Squad. Stretch the third line. Line the box seven nine four. The other two nine six square cockroach. Okay, I'm going to go outside. 
guys off the roof towards the rear it's getting spongy there Go to the rear. You're going to supply ladder four four 
We'll let you know when we're ready for you. 9574. 4 4, you get that? 95, go back. Command of Battalion 1 8, who was that there? How are we looking up there? The guys all? They're making their way down now. They're all in the front. They're uh, making their way down the aerial now, but we need to get off this roof fast. All right, let me go. Command to the We're going to start filling guys out. You got three lines in there. Let's get two of them out and just slide the 59 out. Yeah, this is going to wind up going defensive operations. Five off to the roof. That's okay. Exposure to occupancy rear. We have a 24 to the roof, K. That's off. Command the whole chief. We're going to go to the command channel. Have your aid go to command. Repeat, command the whole chief. Have your aid go to channel 2. Foreign control, the 5 1 shoulder. 5 1 shoulder for the 5 1 shoulder. Your bucket's getting burned. back there towards the back probably in danger of uh, the wall collapsing back there with all that fire back there we got a towel out of back and up the resource Aztec one turn around turn around behind you train two six engine four six engine four six yeah who is supplying this line at uh, 88 was on 75 Six to seventy-five chauffeur. Chauffeur. Shut down that line so we can uh, get these old lines disentangled in the front of the door. Seven five chauffeur, ten four. Seven four nine one three rear track to the command. Command, who's calling? Battalion one three rear track to the command. Go ahead, battalion one three. 
I have Con Ed with me. They are unable to shut the gas to these buildings. I also have heavy fire through the roof and the rear. Alright, we're getting everyone out. Squad roof, squad. Go ahead. I'm uh, on a turntable. Engine 88, 75, Sulfur. Sulfur. Oh, this is going. Shut it down. Thank you. Push it that way. Engine 95 to command. Engine 50. Command. Looks like 48 engines going to be supplying 44 trucks. You just want us to stand fast and grab a hydrant? 95. To the command. Command. We got everybody uh, coming down now. Pretty much a couple guys on the aerial and we're on the bus and we're coming down now. We'll be not sure. Alright, all things are off that roof, correct? Okay, for everyone's off the roof, we got heavy fire in the rear that's going over to the laundry mat side now. So pretty much the whole rear is going pretty good. Alright, 10 4. We pulled the plug. We're going to town, ladders. Command, yeah, There's fire right here too. It was coming. Command to battalion 1-3. 1-3. Yeah, Dave, I think 95 was... Yeah, Dave, we're gonna have two, uh, two tower ladders set up. 44 and 51. 44 is being supplied by 48 and 51 is being supplied by 88. Hide the phone to start to operate. Fire up well. I'm a man to hold you in a for a gold chair. I'm an officer. Command to the roof sector 1-8. All guys are off, correct? All right, sector 1-8. All guys are off. Mikey, you want a hand? All right, guys, they got a towel out in operation in the rear now. They have, uh... Engine 4-8, all members of the council. Roll call to engine 4-6. Engine 4-6, they have my nozzle back on the control of Roll call to engine 4-6, you okay? I'm good. That's the rank, thank you. Roll call to engine 4-2. Engine 4-2, we're going to have all members of the Two towel is in operation in the rear. Guys, we're all outside, okay? Crew 7, uh, I have my chauffeur, iron, OB, and the roof man. Roll call to ladder 5 9. Ladder 5 9, all members of Captain 4 and out of the building. Roll call to engine 8 2. Engine 8 2, all members of Captain 4. Roll call to ladder 5 1. Ladder 5-1, all members of the council are operating. Roll call to the 1-8 Battalion. Dave, you out? 1-8 Battalion, normal council floor. Roll call to the 2-6 Battalion. 2-6, both members of the council floor. Roll call to engine 6-6. Roll call to the Call with five days at a fourth alarm for about four seven nine four. And also on that fourth alarm have a ninety-five foot tower ladder on that assignment, okay? Ten four. Four four engine seven two. Five oh five oh nozzle. Nozzle. I dropped the bucket, I dropped the line. The rope right uh, in the throat. Let me know when you're hooked up and then come up so we can pull it up. Stay 
Get Alpha. Alpha. Where are you? 517 from the street. Lock it up to the 4th of Lawton, the transfer to the box 479 for the end of the 9 Grand Concourse. Hi guys, came back to the front. Resource to the stage. Do you have any units there? Watch your shoulder, free free bucket. Here comes your water. On that MD in the front side. This is a uh, separate from that one. If you wanted to get a line up here, you got you got the uh, opportunity. All right. I'll try and uh, get an engine company back here to stretch up there. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's the we got enough line up on that roof and I'll uh, break it down here. Steve, we have enough line now. We got three lights up here. We're gonna tie it off.
They got a line in operation on exposure four roof. They got two towel liners in operation uh, in the rear. One, uh, two towel liners in operation in the front. They're working on a uh, Man, the ladder, the towel ladder. It's supposed to get set up over here somewhere, I think. Set four. You get your construction. Set four. We're just uh, trying to make our way around to come in from the north. All right, set four. You're going to be on the uh, northbound lane. Resource to 44 engine. Resource to engine 44. Engine 44. Are you guys still on scene and do you have the blitz fire on your rig? Yes, you are on scene. Oh, 
95 foot tower ladder. I don't know if y'all are gonna do the ground level with the car there. Have a multi-personal in front of the fire building operating. Uh, 
campo. Command engine 8-0. Engine 8-0. 8 you're going to head to the rear. There's a two-story battalion 1 8 operating in it with ladder 3 7. You're going to operate them with them and stretch a line if, if needed. Then. Engine 8 has already been charged with uh, stretching a line of 14 trucks and tower ladder, which we're in the process of doing right now. All right, step four, command engine 6 2. Engine 6 2. 6 2, are you supplying 14 as well? We just met up with engine 8. All right, guys, they're forcing entry into Exposure 2, which is the uh, discount uh, furniture store. All right, guys, they got heavy fire here. Tower lot of 5-1's going back up. Come in. Engine 93 is short, but charge that line. That's four. Four, six, show for Charge that line. Yeah, let's go for that. And they're stretching into the uh, exposure here.
Battalion 1 0 Sean, we're going to send ladder 2 2 in to relieve ladder 5 6. Battalion 1 0 10 4. 88 Sean, bro. You can start water. 10 4. Is it bulging at all or can it move? Are you keeping an eye on it? That's four. I don't know if I can move that. Ten four. Keep an eye on that. I know it's tough to see from time to time, but when you get a look, keep an eye on it. Let me know if you see any bulge whatsoever. That's four. All right, guys. Came back to exposure one, the front of the building. Uh, they're making very good progress. Still got uh, five tile out as an operation, three in the front, two in the rear, uh, multiversal in the front, hand line on exposure uh, four, and a line in uh, exposure uh, three alpha, I believe. guys came back down to the front um, they're making still good progress um, two multiversals in the front four towel ladders in the front two towel ladders in the rear uh, and uh, two hand lines from exposure uh, four roof and they have a line in uh, the other exposure in the rear. Uh, fire is still down for at this time still uh, hitting pockets of fire All right, that's it. I got shoot from Carmen Hodgins, is 84. We're 
fighting. And you see the video that we're going to share is going to give you a chilling impact of what the commissioner and FDNY have really uh, placed on the forefront of our conversation. A simple battery uh, operated scooter like this. People are leaving in their homes, they're leaving in their place of businesses, they're leaving in their restaurants, uh, they leave it parked uh, for the most part in places that really they should not be parked. The video was chilling. When you saw how fast this fire started and spread, it just really gives you a point of pause to see what the commissioner has been stating for some time now. We have to really adopt to the use of these batteries. We must make sure that the illegal batteries are not in the city. And then we have to educate the public. A, a simple scooter like this, people park normally where? They park at the door. Where, when these batteries go up, they prevent any type of egress. You really lock yourself in. And our real push is to inform the public that something as simple as seeing recreational can be extremely dangerous and can take the lives of innocent people. Uh, this is a real problem we're having in the city. And I just want to commend the Commissioner of FDNY for the placements on our radar and really leaning into how do we educate the public that you must use the legal batteries and also this, these devices should not be placed inside your home. It should not be placed in, a, in an area that is going to cause a great deal of harm, a great deal of destruction, and the worst case scenario of the loss of life. We have witnessed this over and over again, and that is why we're going to continue uh, to amplify the lesson uh, that a simple device like this, this charred scooter, is only a symbol of what is happening behind us and what has continued to take place since early of this morning. We're still fighting a fire because of the type of uh, device that the fire started from. The chief is going to go into that right now. We'll take over to the
it stopped the fire from spreading to the furniture store, but the fire had already spread to the laundry. I guess the emphasis is that the e-bike uh, fire is so, it's just so much force behind it, so quick. Like I said, under five minutes, we already were putting water on that e-bike fire, and it already spread around the building. It's really a, uh, something that we haven't ever seen before, as far as uh, a small fire turning into something like this in a matter of a few minutes. We, 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 stayed, we had uh, seven injuries here today, five firefighters, three to ten, uh, one Sean Edison worker who is... Uh, Doing okay, it's not life threatening, and also a member of our EYEMS is also being evaluated, but there it's nothing life threatening. Any questions? Is this, Roger. Yeah. Is this in a local battery or a non dwelling battery? Uh, that's under investigation. Uh, as you can see, there's so much destruction, we're going to have to do some more investigation to determine what the exact reason that this bike was. McGee? McGee, okay, you gotta speak up, McGee. Yeah. One second. Go ahead. Just what exactly is the operation now? And it's still so much is happening behind us. Explain what's gonna be happening in the next few hours. Well, right now, you know, most of the fire is extinguished. We still have pockets of fire throughout the structure. So what you see going on is we're just inside to a final extinguishment. We will be here through the night just to make sure that the fire doesn't Speak up, McGee. Just clarify a little bit more about batteries. I'm not quite understanding. We have an illegal bike with a good battery. I, I don't understand. So we still have more investigation to do with this bike to understand uh, what happened exactly. But the things that can increase the risk of a bike uh, having something like this happen are it could be a non-EWL certified bike. It could have a battery that did not come with the bike. It could have a charger that didn't come with the bike. Or the battery could have been tampered with. All of those things make it far more likely uh, to have something like this. And what exactly happened? It exploded. Yes, we are going to release the video, but you will see in, in all of these fires, these lithium ion fires, there is, it is not a slow burn, it's not a small amount of fire, it literally explodes. You see that in this video, you saw it in the video we released last week. It's a tremendous volume of fire. Uh, as soon as it happens, it's very difficult to extinguish. It's particularly dangerous for first responders, and it is particularly dangerous for the amount of damage. Was it a grossly that saw the explosion? That's still under investigation. Go ahead, Roger. Last yeah, question. Gee, what is it about lithium ion batteries that make it so difficult? Because it has its own sorts of oxygen. Well, let me explain why this is such a difficult thing. So there's something they call thermal runaway that happens with lithium ion batteries. Um, there are many small cells in the one large battery, um, and it's once it's on fire, it's incredibly difficult to extinguish. Uh, and each cell can then catch fire. So it's a tremendous volume of fire. But why is it difficult? Because it, it's, it can smother, it has its own sort of oxygen. You have to get water into the battery, I'll let the chief it, but it, it, it has to have a tremendous amount of water into the battery or on the battery itself. You guys, the lithium ion is resistive to extinguishment of water. It requires a tremendous amount of water directly on the battery in order to extinguish it. And with the amount of fire that is surrounding the bike very quickly, we can we have to put that fire out before we can get close enough to you know apply the good. water necessary to extinguish the bike. Okay, everybody good? I just want to Thank acknowledge you. the Bronx Borough President Vanessa Gibson. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, first and foremost, to all of our first responders. A couple of hours ago, almost 11 a.m. on a Sunday morning, as you can imagine, many of our clients and constituents were here at the laundromat and the supermarket. And to see this establishment erupt in fire it is really heartbreaking. And certainly my heart goes out to those that are injured, that are currently in the hospital with minor injuries. We are so thankful that we don't have any fatalities in this particular case, but certainly the damage.
damage has been done here on the Grand Concourse. And I want to thank our Mayor Eric Adams, our FDNY Commissioner Laura Carina, and the entire FDNY team, all of our city officials and emergency responders who are here. We've been here earlier today for a couple of hours just talking to the chief and others around what happened. Uh, but I think it highlights for us as a city what we can continue to do to prevent fires. We've seen far too many residential and commercial fires here in the Bronx. We've been here far too often. And so we are praying for those that are injured. We're so thankful for the swift response of our first responders. And certainly as the investigation is underway, we will get to the bottom of this. And most importantly, reaching out to the landlords to help them rebuild. Because when you think about commercial establishments, those are jobs that are impacted. And in places in our borough where we consider food deserts, we certainly do not want to lose any of our valued supermarkets and laundromats. So we hope to rebuild very soon, um, as soon as we're able. And once again, to everyone, thank you so much for your swift response to do everything to keep the residents of our borough safe. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody.